Hello, you're listening to the Saluki Games Cast. This is episode number 70 for Friday, February 2nd, 2024. Ha, I got the year right this time. <laughs> I actually changed it on the rundown, so I actually know what year it is. I'm Justin Young, and I know what year it is. <laughs> It only took a month. It's typical for Luck- all of us. Luckily, I have Alicia Utec, Christina Ivy, and Mario <laughs> Sanders here to correct me when I get the wrong gear. But, um, you know, now, now I can just do this podcast by myself. I don't need any of you. <laughs> I know what year it is. That's all we're good for. Yeah. <laughs> I could have just had my iPhone out, but no. Nope. I, I needed three of you. <laughs> How many communication degrees does it take to figure out the year? <laughs> uh, hey, we're communication. We're not math majors. <laughs> math is a four-letter word, and my mom told me to stay away from those. <laughs> <laughs> stay away from maths? <laughs> no, from four-letter words. <laughs> well, I mean, like, that's why, like, the UK and stuff like that call it maths. <laughs> So yeah. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, but you probably should engage with that. No, nope. <laughs> don't no. engage with British math. <laughs> <laughs> don't engage with ke- math. Don't engage with work. All of those four-letter words, bad uh, things. How should we split this crumpet? <laughs> <laughs> oh my oh. gosh! <laughs> How's everyone doing? Yeah. <laughs> it, it, it was. Yes. A, it was a rough week. Last weekend was rough. It was a rough time, but you know, it, Carbondale is insane to me sometimes. It is February second, and I'm wearing shorts. Oh my god, it's so lovely though. It is yeah, it's sixty one <laughs> degrees. I went for a walk yesterday, so like oh, that's helping my mental health. I was about to say, like I, <laughs> I when I went to, when I was in grad school, I did graduate school in Nebraska, and. I got real sick and turns out I got a vitamin D deficiency because one, I didn't go outside much because I, you know, uh, graduate school. And then two, (laughs) when I did go outside, it was disgusting outside (laughs) and so cold and awful. And yeah, I got a vitamin D deficiency in graduate school. So when I taught up at the Michigan border, one one of my colleagues uh, would always say, this we live in a place where the air hurts my face. Yes, and she said we shouldn't. Humans shouldn't live in places where the air hurts our faces. Yes, exactly. See, and as a Minnesotan, I'm just like, yeah, that's that's what I grew up with. The only so they wouldn't cancel class in Nebraska for for harsh snow, but they did cancel class when we had like negative 19 wind wind chill. Yeah. yeah. So like wind is more dangerous in that state than the actual snow itself Mm -mm. oh yeah Mm -mm. and and people don't get like when you're in a really flat state Mm -hmm. like how much worse the wind is yes there's nothing to stop it right like in indiana's that way indiana's just vast emptiness (laughs) in more ways than one um and it's just an incredibly flat state so like the wind just is Mm -hmm. huge gust yeah like we never get that sort of wind around here Mm -hmm. and you know this isn't even particularly hilly you know, if you go south, and yeah, yeah, it is, but um, you don't realize that just the gradation that's yep. here is so much more significant than you get in a place like Indiana mm-hmm. or, or you know, certainly um, eastern Kansas. Yeah, oh god, <laughs> so yep, um, yeah, so it is a beautiful day outside, it's kind of crazy for it to be Groundhog Day and <laughs> the weather be this nice. And Did everything. he see a shadow? Do we know? I, I don't. I don't, I don't think he saw. I think that I saw he did not see his shadow. So does that mean more or what, no? Um, it's, if he sees his shadow, right? It's six more weeks of winter. Says I'm. Bucks to Tony Phil. I I always got this confused uh, can, can, when I was I don't, little. I don't know. Bill Murray's trapped in the same day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the Sunny and Cher song's going to come on every morning. Yep. He did not see his shadow, which means we're in for an early spring. Yeah, see? Uh, oh, dear, though. This is the first time since 2020 that he's predicted an early God. spring. And there are so many parallels with 2020 happening right now that people are very concerned. So that's... Oh, no. um, <laughs> he's just a giant rodent. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't think... He doesn't have, like, a meteorology degree. Or anything, but. He's just doing his best. The, he, he's, yeah. the balancing act my brain does between like being a scholar and being very, very like 
superstitious is like disgusting. <laughs> no, here's here's the thing. I I've just accepted that I'm like I'm okay with some placebo effect in my life. <laughs> like, does it actually? If I'm at a campfire and smoke is coming in my face and I say, I hate I, I hate rabbits. Does the smoke actually go away? I don't know, but I feel like it does. So that's okay. It's like as long as I acknowledge. What? Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I was just going to go. I was going to let it go. Y'all have never heard that? No. I, it was when Mario turned and looked at me like, am I crazy? Are you hearing this? <laughs> I, was like, I, I am hearing this. I, this is crazy. I just thought it was a Minnesotan thing. <laughs> yeah. Maybe it could be. It's a thing I've always heard. Smoke. Don't you know the no. rabbits? <laughs> oh yeah. If you hate those rabbits, then the smoke then the smoke goes away from your face. Don't you know? <laughs> that was like are, Boston, are, Minnesota. <laughs> do you mean rabbits or rabbits? <laughs> are these like the little characters? Rabbits. Yeah. Okay. Kill the rabbit. Kill the rabbit. Oh. Kill the rabbit. <laughs> Alicia. Okay. But still, we haven't gotten to. Why does smoke blowing your face have to do with rabbits? I, I don't know. Also, why don't you just <laughs> you move? Like obviously because the wind the is blowing. Follows you. It knows. Oh. This is a rabbit fan. <laughs> <laughs> Ruin this person's I just, night. I just envision like a uh, like a Bugs Bunny type character just like fanning <laughs> the you smoke know, in Alicia's face. You know, Bugs Bunny is the type of chaotic neutral yeah. that would do that. <laughs> first drag queen I ever saw was Bugs Bunny. So. I, I feel like Bugs Bunny is all of our introduction to drag. <laughs> well, that's true. Like, I, I think Bugs Bunny was the first cartoon character I ever saw, like, dress up in drag. That yeah. or Mrs. Doubtfire, though. Well, but... Mm -hmm. Bugs Bunny. I was, I was older when I saw oh, Mrs. Fair, Doubtfire. Fair, fair, I've still fair. never seen Mrs. Doubtfire. <gasps> what? I okay. certainly saw Bugs Bunny dressed in drag before I ever saw Mrs. Doubtfire. <laughs> fair, fair, fair. But, like... <laughs> Yeah, it probably was Bugs Bunny. I'm like trying to think. Like it could have been Shaggy, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. or or Scooby. I feel like yeah. Scooby dresses up as a woman at some yeah. point. Yeah, in those cartoons. And like for me, I'm like I I feel like it was probably around the same time that I saw Bugs Bunny and James from Team Rocket. Um, mm. see, that would definitely be a much younger thing because I want to say that I was older watching even Team Rocket. Yeah. So, so anytime somebody brings up Bugs Bunny and drag, it just makes me think of Wayne's World. Yeah. And they're lying on the car, and he's like, he's like, hey, Wayne, did you ever, th when Bugs Bunny dressed up as a girl bunny, did you ever think she was kind of, he was kind of hot? And, <laughs> and, um, and Mike Myers just like starts laughing uncontrollably. And a, apparently that was like a real laugh from <laughs> Mike Myers. <laughs> Like, I, I forget what the story is. Like, he wasn't expecting him to say that, or they clipped that from some other moment mm. with the two of them when they were filming. But it always makes me think of that because it is like the actual reaction yeah. somebody would have. I like that it, he doesn't really make fun of him. He's just like, what are you talking about? <laughs> it's the same reaction you guys had to my <laughs> trip. No, no <laughs> because I can kind of understand what Garth is talking about in that scene. <laughs> I still have no idea what you're talking about. Well, and I mean, I, I think Garth was onto something considering how many people's, at least of my generation's first love was Lola Bunny from Space Jam. Uh, uh, there valid. you go. Oh, a queer awakening. I didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> Dang. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So like, really, you have no idea where this thing about fire and it's just a bunnies thing. comes from? When smoke, when you're out of, when you're, Doing a campfire and the smoke is coming in your face, you say, I hate rabbits, and the smoke goes away. It goes blo to blow in somebody else's face. This this is like Anya from Buffy the Vampire Slayer. <laughs> <laughs> like everybody's just having a conversation. You're like, it's rabbits. <laughs> well, you don't like have to jump up and yell it. <laughs> you can just yeah, say you, you have to <laughs> declare it definitively. <laughs> I, I declare yeah, bankruptcy. Exactly. <laughs> Michael Scott style declaring bankruptcy. I hate rabbits. Uh, I declare I hate rabbits. I'm, I'm just thinking there's something else in the campfire. <laughs> that's that's all I can think of. Is that's not that's not campfire smoke, boo boo. You need to move. <laughs> you need to go somewhere, have a cup of water, <laughs> sit down. <laughs> you don't need to be in those woods. <laughs> that is somebody's stash that you're burning. <laughs> 
<laughs> yep. Oh, man. Look, that's how people get killed in the woods. <laughs> they stumble awesome. into somebody's stash. Oh, oh man. So, uh, video games. <laughs> I don't, I don't know. <laughs> Look, that's another placebo effect in my life. <laughs> I don't know if that will ever recover from. You got to move because you hate rabbits. <laughs> <laughs> what is going on in Minnesota? <laughs> Lots of Look, stashes. Remember that book, What's Wrong with Kansas? Uh, What's <laughs> wrong with Minnesota? <laughs> Look, here's the thing. You have to decide if it's you, if you're get, taking the balance of your eyes stinging from the smoke in your face, but then you don't have mosquitoes versus No, it's it's not that. It's knowing that you love rabbits in your heart and you're willing to <laughs> accept the smoke. <laughs> I never said I had to tell the truth about I hate rabbits. <laughs> okay, but like <laughs> The intensity of Mario's face. <laughs> it's knowing you love rabbits in your heart. This is my cross to bear. <laughs> this is like a weird cult like you're in. This, this isn't local flavor. So the title is going to be <laughs> I Hate I Rabbits. <laughs> got it. Got it. <laughs> Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I don't know if I want to subject people to this. <laughs> we have to just toss this episode. <laughs> there are going to be people listening to this while they're driving. They're going to drive off the road. Is <laughs> one of, what is she talking about? This is going to be one of those cold opens where we just like we start the episode brand new, but like this gets thrown out at the very end. Oh, my gosh. This is uh this is uh what is it? Like that extra extra credit, like the the bloopers or whatever. The blooper reel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it's not a blooper, she didn't misspeak. <laughs> we, we, we thought she did. That's why Mario was checking with me. He was like, Did I hear that right? Yeah. <laughs> Well, it was, is it was, is she it was, having a stroke? Part of it was like Christina's acceptance of it. Yeah. And I was just like, yeah. wait, what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, uh, the two of them are <laughs> in on this. <laughs> Listen, I, I am a very big fan of letting people be in their own <laughs> weird little brain space. I'm like, oh, yeah, hun. Yeah, that, uh, <laughs> I even went Minnesotan with that. <laughs> May I remind everyone, this started as placebo effect. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I'm fine. Let people have their weird eccentricities. <laughs> but when they put something like that into my brain, because I swear this weekend I'm going to be out somewhere and there's going to be like a candle burning and I'm going to go, oh my God, do, no. I, do I love rabbits or hate them? No, no, it only works with campfires. Mm. Oh, what? It's a very particular yeah. type of smoke. Uh, I just imagine like... The little, the little like <laughs> characters in Justin's brain, like you know, like in those cartoons, like an scrambling out. around, holding this thing, being like, "Where do I put it? Where do I put it? Where do I put it? Like, what do I do?" It's it's the angel and the devil on your shoulder. <laughs> like, do you love? No, you love rabbits. You can't lie about this. Like, the angel the is Mario. The smoke you isn't worth it. The smoke heart. isn't worth it. It is. It's Lewis Black and Inside Out. It's anger. <laughs> That's what is ranting in my head. Have you ever heard Lewis Black's uh, rant about, I never would have made it through that year of college if mm. not for my horse? <laughs> and he talks about overhearing this in a restaurant, and he said, and it just burrowed into my brain. That is what, if, if the smoke is blowing in my face, I hate rabbits, I have to move. <laughs> No, you don't have to move. The smoke you goes away. You say, I hate rabbits. That way the smoke moves away from your face to someone else's face. Yeah, so it's like a placebo. Like, yeah, you did, don't move. Is it because you hate rabbits? Well, that's a, what I want to know is like, <laughs> what is the smoke's mentality here? Like, is the smoke going after you because it also hates rabbits? And it's like, no, no rabbit lovers here. And then it's like, oh, you hate rabbits too? Okay, well, I'll go find somebody new. Or is it more like a... Oh my God! You also love rabbits, like bestie. Like let's <laughs> let's do this thing together, and then you like reject what its thing? advances. I love okay, so Justin's still trying to make sense of it. Mario is into it. Mario is characterizing the smoke. Is like, what is its motivation? <laughs> Mario has turned this into the smoke monster from uh, from Lost. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I never watched Lost, so I cannot help you with, okay, with that one. Okay. Lost is a show that I... I know what Lost no, is. No, no, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. 
<laughs> it's the way you said it. The look okay. on your face. Lost is a show. No, I know what Lost is, Christy. Like, <laughs> like Mario's like five. No, I did. Sweetie, <laughs> it's a show. <laughs> you watch it on the listen, TV. Listen, you, you can't what watch. It? You can't watch it on your Game Boy, <laughs> sweetie. <laughs> Uh, false. I had Fairly Odd Parents episodes on my Game Boy. We, we don't. We don't have Lost at home. <laughs> I, what I was gonna say, it's a show I have to watch like every so often, because like it's it's one of those like so the different characters are different like have different philosopher names and they like embody the mentality of those philosophers and so it's like what would happen if we put these folks Locke together. and Rousseau exactly together. exactly and so I have to go back and watch it some like at different points in my life to like I don't know it's like my reflection show uh, so that not <laughs> I just remember when Game of Thrones season eight happened and the ending happened and I was just like this is lost all over again even uh, though I didn't watch lost okay, and I like my dad had even stopped watching lost by that point so we literally did not care but just like watching the internet blow up I was like I love the ending. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, I would have liked that ending had they not lied to the audience. Yeah. About it. The season before. Yeah. Also. But yeah, sorry. Keep going. No, I, I mean, that's just what made me mad about the ending because they just lied to the audience. I'm like, oh, that's a fine ending. But like, you didn't have to lie to people that yeah. that's what you were going to do. And then they're like, well, that's not really what we did. And it's like. Yes, it is. Yeah. Yeah. Fair. I also saw the ending um, way after the actual show was released. Mm -hmm. Like, I binged watched this on Netflix while I was uh, finishing up my thesis. And so uh. it was it was much after that. So I didn't I wasn't like following the, the pop culture. So it was just me in my room right. <laughs> being like, yeah, that, that show probably plays better now, like as a binge show. Not trying to watch it week to week yes, and season to season. For sure. And then also, that was like one of the first shows where people really got into trying to figure out where it was going. The theory mm -hmm. crafting. And yeah. Yes. Yes. And that being like a week to week thing. I mean, obviously that started back with like the X-Files originally, mm -hmm. but... Mm -hmm. Lost, Lost was, was a big one where yeah. the fandom was very active in what's going on, put together the pieces. It was a whole other string. level. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Um, so it probably does play better to go back and watch it now mm -hmm. uh, for the first time. Yeah. So. Um, all right. Well, um, <laughs> that may be it for this week. <laughs> <laughs> Alicia takes a week off and she comes back and she just drops like a bomb on us almost immediately. All right. Let's... Uh, Let's just move into what you've been playing. We're going to invert this. I can't allow Alicia to speak right now for fear of what she might tell us next. So, uh, Mario, why don't we go counterclockwise? What have you been playing? Uh, so I played uh, Celeste 64. Mm. Um, that's really all I've all I played this past week, I think. Um, I played it with a friend yesterday. There's a friend, uh, he and I, pretty regularly do races of Celeste. We are not like great at like the speed run of it, but we're decent enough. I think both of us have like a best time of under 50 minutes. Mm. And so we hadn't, had, hadn't played, hadn't played it, hadn't looked at it. And so we just sort of like, I never really like the the language, but I don't know another way to, we blind raced it of, you know, sort of just com completing it as, as much as, we could, and then we kind of realized, oh, it's not really, uh, there aren't levels to it. It's just one big level that you traverse. So we changed. It was like, okay, the first person to collect all of the strawberries. And it's fun. It's it's a little janky, but I mean, if anything, it nails the N64 <laughs> in that sense. Um, right. The, the I'm not going to say the worst part about it, but again, it's, it's the N64 issue, the depth perception yeah. of like with the dash and all that. They have a, um, what they call a Z guide, which I imagine is just like a dotted line underneath you that it's supposed to show like your spatial um, positioning, positioning uh, compared to like the platforms below you. It wasn't super helpful for me. It might be helpful for other people. Um, 
but it was fun. I, you know, he and I both left it saying like, I would play this again. I would try and learn like a route to, you know, same thing, kind of like speed run this. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's fun. And I think the, I get, I mean, it's a little bit of a spoiler, I guess, but the, one of the best parts about it is so there's like the open world and, um, you have, there are strawberries in the open world, but then there are a number of cassettes in the open world as well. And you jump into the cassette and it takes you to like a sub area and it's very much the sub areas, the like sub levels of Super Mario Sunshine. Mm -hmm. So like, you know, the, the floodless levels they, and and it's very clear that they are emulating that the music is is very similar with like the snapping it it almost sounds like if if you were to you know show this song or just play this song for somebody who hadn't played sunshine in a long time they would probably guess like oh that's from sunshine oh. um it's very very clearly like trying to emulate that that feel that's cool. and there are fun sections um yeah it's it's one that like if you like celeste or you like those sorts of N64 platformers, I would definitely recommend it. I think we finished it in less than two hours. Um, How is the camera in those mm -hmm. sub-levels? Because that was always the problem with Super Mario sure. Sunshine. Those levels are really a lot of fun, but sometimes the camera in that game is so janky it would kill you in those levels. The camera in general in the game, like even in the overworld, is not great and i think that's just because because you're like very clearly trying to find where these things are in the world mm -hmm. it's can just be hard to navigate because it wants to focus on madeline and so like trying to look up or trying to look down you know one of the best things about like the super mario 64 camera is that you can go into that first person mm -hmm. mode right sure. so you can really mm -hmm. see everything there is at least as far as i know there wasn't that same thing in this game so it made getting a visual on certain things, even if you got up to like the top of the level, which I will also say it did really well of, of giving off that N64 vibe because the draw distance is terrible. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, like I said, it's a fun game. I would definitely recommend it to people really they just like across free, the board. Yeah. Yeah. It's on itch.io. Um, yeah. And it's like to celebrate what the seventh ever sixth i think oh six yeah okay. this is a 2018 game yeah um i would i would absolutely love if they did more with it if they released more levels i would i would play more of it in a heartbeat that's i mean it's really cool just for them to have made this and then to release it for free um So it's just generally, like, I think a, a really cool thing to see them kind of experiment with this. And, like, you know, like, Celeste is such a game about precision, right? Mm -hmm. And, like, being able to make those precision jumps and be able to, like, perfectly uh, hit all of that and to see them uh, try to take that and move it into a 3D world. I mean, they're, you know, yes, we are better at making 3D games today than we were you know, 25 years ago, or however long now, 30 years ago, when uh, Mario 64 came out. But that transition from 2D into a 3D world is still incredibly challenging mm, for developers yeah. to make. Well, I think the one of the most impressive things about it is they made it in like a week. Oh, wow. Seriously? Oh, that's, really? that's what it, it says on the, the thing is like a weekish is when is how fast they made it. Wow. wow. Yeah. That, that's cool. Like, I'm... I'm I want to play that because I love Celeste. That's such a cool game um, and such a fun game. And so to see them do anything new with that kind of excites me. Um, well, I think it's really cool too because, like, I feel like we get so we get so many games that are older that we're asking for remasters and updates and that. But and we get games that emulate, you know, thirty-two bit, sixteen bit, whatever. But I can't think of any other game where they've been like, "No, let's let's actually make it's a new game." That we're going to make a Nintendo 64 version of this exact game. Yeah. Yeah, I mean... I, I, it's just... A, it's, a, it's a neat idea. Yeah, there's been some demakes of some games. And I, I suppose it, like, depends on your perspective. Like, is this a demake? Because it, it is going from a very modern mm -hmm. platformer back to an N64 game. But it, 
you know, from the perspective of it's going from a 2D game to a 3D game, it's yeah. not a D make. So, um, but yeah, I mean, the, um, was the, um, uh, Curse of the Moon? Is that the name of the Oh, Bloodstain. Bloodstain. Um, Curse of the Moon, Curse of the is Moon and the Ritual, 2D one. Ritual of the Night. I don't remember which one is which, but yeah. Yeah, so, like, they did that. They, like, released a modern Metroidvania, and then they released a more traditional uh, Castlevania game that's level-based that was, like, 8-bit sprites and and all that. So, yeah, there's been some kind of interesting things with that. But I think you're right. Like, this is the first time I remember somebody, like, hey, we're going to make this 2D action platformer, and then we're going to go make an N64 version of it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's I, as far as I know. That's really or I can think about. That's really all I played. But um, yeah, I would. It's very much a recommend uh, on my end, and it's free on itch.io. Yeah, yeah. So check it out there. Um, all right, uh, Christina. Uh, so I it was going to be a week where basically I just replicated last week, and then on Tuesday I was scrolling through TikTok as you do. And one of my, the people I follow on TikTok was talking about this game called Spirit Fair, uh, which I found out later is an older game. But um, I was like, oh, I need something easy. And she talked about how the like um, flow of it was was really slow and, and easy. And uh, but then I didn't realize like the emotional <laughs> toll that was going to be a part of it. Because like Spirit Fair, if you don't know, is you play as a little girl, Stella, and you have a cat named Daffodil, and you are now going to be the ferryman or fairy person that that takes people, crosses them over to the other side, essentially. Um, and while you after are... After they've passed yes, away. Yes, after they've passed away, yes. And so, like, you, you're on this, this boat that you can customize as you go along, um, and you go to different islands and collect these spirits on the islands. They're like, basically look like black gas with like little eyes that are lights and have like cloaks over them. But then when this, once they get on the boat, they turn into their spirits, true form, which is an animal of some sort. Like, uh, one of the characters that you end up picking up is your uncle and he's a gigantic frog. Uh, that's that's always hungry and just it's they're real cute (laughs) it's also one of those Um, but the pacing of it's real slow like you are essentially doing things for these spirits and and helping them kind of wrap up their lives essentially and then um, once you they get to a point where they're ready they cross over and it's like it's 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 emotional uh so yeah um and i've already looked up like parts of the game that i haven't played a lot into it but i was like okay i uh there's gonna be emotions and i need to prepare myself for that and so i looked it up ahead of time so i know where the story's going uh i don't want to necessarily ruin it because it sounds gorgeous but um if you need like a s- easy paced game, it's one of those that's like you you cook for them, you build the ship, you get to customize it. Like the little sections are like puzzle pieces that fit together. Um, you can uh, basically grow f- like f- veggies and stuff like that to cook for them. So there's like that watering aspect of it, gathering supplies, things like that. It's um and it's a really beautiful game. So if you need like a um, slow paced uh game that you don't mind is gonna sucker punch you in the gut uh with emotions uh this i i really really am enjoying it yeah i I think that's the key to that game is go in knowing it is going to emotionally wreck you yes um and it's a beautiful game Mm -hmm. like and it's a, a game that's beautiful in a way that i i don't think we talk about games being beautiful a lot like that, the the feel of it, the um, mo- the vibe of mm-hmm. that game, e- even more than just the story. Like it's what you're doing, yes, and like you're kind of setting things right. I mean, it's um, it's Quantum Leap the game. Yeah, oh, I love that show. <laughs> um, and you know, it's but it's a rough game. It's a rough game to play through if you're not in the right emotional space. Yeah. It is 
be careful playing that game. For sure. Like I, uh, I, that, that's why I had to look ahead because <laughs> I, I was like, girl, are you, are you, <laughs> you've had a, you had a rough winter. Are you okay? Um, and so looking up, it's like prepared me a little bit, but the moments are still tender. They're still really sweet. Um, but I at least know where, where it's headed. So that's, yeah. 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 If you, if you, if you recently lost someone or a pet, yes, maybe, oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, maybe don't play it right yeah. away. Um, yeah, it's one that I've wanted to play. I've had for a while, mm. um, but yeah, I just haven't really wanted to dive into it. Yeah. Um, sure. Um, but I, I, you know, what you're you're talking about, I think one of the things that I appreciate um, a lot about. A, a game like that and, and a game I'll talk about a little bit later. Um, you know, I've mentioned it earlier on, whereas a game scholar, their name is Bo Ruberg, and they talk about uh, the hegemony of fun in, mm -hmm. in video games. And that, you know, sort of the ultimate marker of a game is whether or not it's fun. Mm -hmm. And, you know, their their argument is like, the, and how that that particular line of thinking gets used to stifle certain voices yeah. mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. and like shut down critique of games or like the representation of certain identities in games mm -hmm. like well if it's fun who, who really right. cares and you know their argument is like well there are a lot of games that aren't fun mm. i think yeah. it, it it's safe to say that like they're called sonic games <laughs> <laughs> but like in a, in a you know speaking seriously like i imagine like spirit fair probably isn't fun it's a good game but yeah. it's probably not a fun game it, the way that other games are fun right i i talked last week about like the reason why i have the phone games is for my anxiety right of of just having something to do to distract myself mm -hmm. the the what i would say fun but honestly is just <laughs> using the game for that purpose of of spirit fairs there and the maintenance of the ship and you know collecting of things things like that uh, so there's that element. Well, and I think it's sorry to, to cut you oh, off. No, 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 I, you know, I think about it in, just in the sense of like if somebody came up to me and said like, "Oh yeah, I played Spirit Fair. It's really fun." I'd be like, "That's uh, yeah." I, I mean, like, okay, <laughs> I, I understand you? what you're saying, <laughs> but like, that's probably it's not the word I would expect. It's like when we were talking a couple weeks ago about the movie that just came out recently, The Iron Claw. Mm, um, right. And you know, yeah. I think I said like, "Oh yeah, that movie is really good." And it's like that's a weird word to use to describe mm. it. Like yeah. it's it's not, but it is because it's a brutal film. Yeah, it's like kind of entertaining. Yeah, right. Yes. It's yeah. like yes. when people would talk about Schindler's List. Mm. Oh, I mm. went to see Schindler's List. Oh, it's it's great. It's really entertaining. And it's like entertaining. Like, is that the right word? Yeah. yeah. But like, I know what you mean. Yeah. I see yeah. these right? as like experiences, mm -hmm. and sometimes I want to take my emotions for a little roller coaster. Like, I want to explore those parts. I want it to tell this like the story, not because I'm you know, <laughs> I don't know, uh, sadistic to myself or you know what I mean. Well, I but think there, there's something in seeing that not not only seeing that other human beings are experiencing these things, but seeing how they can bring those experiences of heavy things yeah. to the world, mm. you know, but something like spirit fair or b being able to show how, and I say this with no context of spirit fair. I don't know. I don't know the story. I don't know the ending. I don't know anything, mm. but hearing all this and, and uh, I'm getting the vibe that there is tragedy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, well, I mean, you know, I, this conversation reminds me of the game Unpacking. Mm, That's what I was thinking yes. when you brought up the fun point. I was like, mm -hmm. I don't know if Unpacking is fun. I mean, I remember watching Jacksepticeye play it, and like, especially the moment where. Well, let's not spoil play. anything. Yeah, but there, there's a, there, there's a <laughs> moment with the main character's degree, mm. and where you can put it versus where you can't. Yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, you know, th that's a game to me that is it's not a super fun game because it's a game where you are placing objects into a room. And maybe somebody who's more into decorating <laughs> would get really into that game more than I did. <laughs> um, I found it enjoyable in the way that I find a lot of kind of mobile games enjoyable. Yes. But, like, what really hooked me in that game is the way that it's telling a story. Yeah. Right. And it's telling a story very much through 
like what you're talking about, where you can place certain objects, where you can't, what objects continue with you throughout yes. the story, mm-hmm. and which objects get left behind, which objects get added mm-hmm. uh, as you're m- moving to different places and packing and unpacking. Um, and it's a beautiful game, but like you're, you're absolutely right. Like I don't know that I would ever describe that game as fun to someone Mm -hmm. or entertaining but it is a cool experience that i think people should should experience themselves Mm -hmm. and so spirit fair is much the same way yes absolutely um and that's really i I say this on here a lot but to me that's the coolest thing about video games right now Mm -hmm. is that people can make those sorts of experiences that you know 20 years ago weren't getting made Yes. Yeah. Mm. I mean, even Celeste is like still like a really fun game, even though it has more like mature ideas going on in it. Um, but that's still like basically a really fun mm-hmm. platformer. Yeah. Right? It's like the the medium has shifted and grown where it's like uh, almost like movies or like television shows where mm-hmm. it's just a more interactive part of that. I think we talked either last week or one of the times I was on about the like Jordan Peele, Kojima Thing that's coming up mm-hmm. at some point um, that's a like kind of sells itself as a movie, but right. that is highly interactive, which honestly is a genre of video games that I really like. Um, We're going to talk about one of those. Uh, yes, I'm so stoked. Well, and <laughs> it's it's just that like as it's matured and you know games have become more complex, I feel like people who make games have gotten really good at expressing a much fuller range of Mm -hmm. the human experience rather than just yeah you're this character and you're going on an adventure which is great still make those games but (laughs) you know there's there's so much more that you know people are going to connect with and identify with and i could definitely say like i would caution anyone who has lost someone or a pet or anything like that from doing it but i can definitely see it being like a healing thing like once once you have processed a lot of those emotions once you have reached a point where something like this would be okay as long as you're cautious and aware of like what you're doing of it being something very very healing yeah. for you i agree with that i i just want to warn people yes no <laughs> what I, they're getting into i and, went into today being like i need to make sure to talk about the fact that i even had to look up <laughs> the the ending in order to brace myself for it because it's definitely one of those but um as long as you know that and and obviously with video games you can always stop <laughs> if it gets to be too much but uh yeah exactly um all right uh Leisha, what have you been playing I have not been playing a whole lot, honestly. Um, I did finish everything on Power Wash Simulator, even the holiday free DLC. So now I really can only replay on that, which bums me out because <laughs> that is my de-stress game. But And you got the Final Fantasy VII DLC, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I got that one. I, didn't, I, I might get the Back to the Future one at some point now. Mm-hmm. I have no interest in the SpongeBob one. I was not a SpongeBob kid. There was a Tomb Raider. The Tomb Raider yeah, one too. That yep. also free that was free. Yep. Okay. That, that one was free. That and Final Fantasy VII remake were free. And the Back to the Future one costs money. Yeah, Back to the Future one is eight bucks. It looks really cool though. It, it looks, does. It looks <laughs> cool. I, is, I, I might do that one. It has tempted me <laughs> multiple times. Um, but yeah, so I beat that, and then the other thing. Uh, the sun is shining. It's gorgeous out. I went for a walk. I opened up Pokemon Go again. Yeah. <laughs> so. Now you have a way to keep in touch with OJ. Yeah. Aww. <laughs> um. So, yeah, that that's that's fun. You know, I'm. When I come back to it, it's always kind of weird because, like, I come back to it and I remember how long it took to get the Johto Pokemon in there. And now I'm like. Scarlet and Violet have been out for less than a year. What do you mean we have the Paldea Pokemon in here? <laughs> but I'm ho- I'm thinking, and it'll be good for me to get back on that more because my parents both still play it fairly regularly too. And so, especially for you know the amount of research tasks that are the amount of field research that are like send so many gifts to so many people. Well, you know a lot of the people who my parents are friends with on there don't play anymore. So they kind of rely on me and my sister and the three other people. <laughs> yeah. So I'm, I'm, 
I'm hoping that with the warmer weather, I will be going for more walks. And with that part of my part of that is playing Pokemon Go more. So that's cool. It's always cool to be able to go back to a game Mm -hmm. like that and like and find a love for it again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Um, let's see. This week, I did not have a whole lot of time to play games. So what I did play was a little bit of Power World. I continued playing that after the last episode. Um, it's just it's such a weird game. <laughs> like uh, that's just somebody asked me the other day what I was playing, and I said that, and they, said, what do you think of it? And I said it's, a, it's just a weird game. Like that's the best way I can describe it. It's so weird. Yeah. Um, and I think that's part of why it's popular because it's really weird and doesn't quite fit in mm-hmm. um, with anything else. Like, I mean, we talked about all the things it borrows very liberally from. <laughs> um, but it, it just also, because it's so weird and it's such a mishmash of all those things, it sort of doesn't exactly feel like anything else. And um, I, I think I'm probably done with it. I think I've had my <laughs> time with it. <laughs> But I can, I can understand why people are really into that game, um, at least for a short period of time. Mm-hmm. I don't know that six months from now people are still going to be really into Power World, but I may be surprised. <laughs> um, the other thing that I haven't had a chance to play, but I did finally pick up, is the Final Fantasy Pixel remasters. Ooh. So that's one through six. They did these Pixel remasters. The HD 2D or whatever. There's a little bit of that, I think, in there, but it's not entirely that. It's, like, these are fairly accurate to the original versions, though they did go in and, like, update the graphics. Yeah. Um, but it's not that, um, it's not that uh, sort of skewed perspective that you see in other oh, yeah. HD 2D games. Um, but anyways, they had them on sale on Steam, um, so it was like, they've been selling some of those for over $20 a piece. And mm-hmm. so they had like the entire collection of all six, the first six final fantasy games for $60. Oh, wow. Which 10 bucks a game. Yeah. Not bad. Yeah. The, I will play those games. I do yeah. play those games. I've played them on emulators for years, so I don't mind throwing some bucks to square for it. So, um, anyways, um, so that's what I've been playing, but like I said, I haven't gotten into those yet. I just picked them up, and so they're now in my collection. Mm. Um, and so we'll see what happens. Uh, Mario just had to excuse himself for a moment, so um, if you heard a door opening and shutting, that's what you're hearing. <laughs> um, so that does it for what we've been playing. Let's move on to the news. And the biggest news of the week, I think, is that PlayStation had another state of play um, so I, I never know what all their different events are called, but anyways, this is a, one of their showcases. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think maybe showcase is their big thing mm-hmm. when that they do at E3 and the state of play is their smaller thing. I don't but know. now that E3 is dead. <laughs> well, yes, who knows yeah. <laughs> like what we'll have. <laughs> Um, anyways, they did show off quite a few games, so we're just going to kind of run through some of these and if people want to talk about them, we will, if not, we'll just kind of move on. I know at least one of these that uh, Mario wants to talk about, so we'll skip it and come back to it. Um, So the first one is they are remastering, I guess, uh, Sonic Generations, um, and they're adding additional content involving Shadow in some form and is being re-released as Sonic X Shadow or Sonic Cross Shadow Generations. Everything about this cracks me up. (laughs) Everything about this, because the fa- one I knew you would have opinions. <laughs> one the the fact that they're adding in a brand new Shadow storyline and they're bringing back Black Doom from the Shadow the Hedgehog game that they haven't Sega hasn't acknowledged probably since two thousand eight. <laughs> so the fact that they're doing that is already sending me, and then the fact that of all the ways to name this game. They name it Sonic X Shadow, <laughs> which puts my my brain instantly. I'm like, we are we are traumatizing a new generation by making them Google Sonic X Shadow, <laughs> and and also my brain goes Shadow from Sonic X. 
Are we doing a Sonic X game? What? I just, everything about this is hilarious to me. <laughs> so I think in Japan, usually when they put the X in there, it means cross. Uh, yeah, I think, I'm sure that's what they intended. Yeah. And like they, but, but the delight of fans <laughs> is that we are traumatizing a new generation with Sonic X Shadow. I know, because technically, technically, if you're looking at fan culture, just in general, a, a male male pairing is slash, not X. But that doesn't mean people didn't write it as Sonic X Shadow. <laughs> sure. So we we are traumatizing a new generation with this, and I am so excited. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'll say um, I I give the Sonic games a lot of uh, grief, but. This is one of the actually decent ones they've released over the last decade or so. Um, this and Sonic Mania are the two, at least that I've played, that I've actually thought were pretty good attempts to recapture some of that Sonic magic. Um, so this is a good game for people to play if you've never played it before. I don't know how significant this new story content is going to be. I think it's I think it's a bonus story, so I imagine it'll be similar to like DLC length. Sure, yeah, but even, like, what does that mean? Is it an hour or two of content or three or four hours? or? You know? I, I would guess probably no more than four. Yeah. But they could decide that they're going to give us all 14 endings of Shadow the Hedgehog 2006, so who knows? <laughs> yeah, so I guess we'll see. Um, it, you know, but that's neat for people who haven't played it. Um, the next game was Stellar Blade. And I know, uh, Mario, you said you were really interested in this. Yeah, I mean, it, it, to me, it was, it was definitely giving off the vibe of like a near automata. Mm -hmm. um, and I can, I almost, I like, in some ways had to look up, like, is this a Yoko Taro game? Because it like is simultaneously, I mean, not simultaneous, but like, it feels very horny in like a not horny way, which is like <laughs> I feel characteristic of Yoko Taro. So not Gal Gun. Yeah. Um, it's not a Yoko Taro game, but it, it feels like it is very much giving off that, um, giving off the vibe of like a, a near automata in the ways that like the action and, you know, your, your interaction with the other characters and stuff like that. I can completely see that. I got very similar vibes from that game. Yeah. Um, let's see. We got some news on Silent Hill. So we got a Silent Hill 2 remake, a new trailer for that, um, that kind of showed off the new combat in that mm -hmm. game and everything. And then we also got the surprise announcement of Silent Hill, the short message, which released at the same time that they um, announced it. And I, I will be 100% honest here. So I know the Silent Hill, Silent Hill 2 remake they announced. I know mm -hmm. that's been talked about. Is the short message, was that completely new? Had they never talked about that before? Because remember they announced like 10 Silent Hill games <laughs> I at one event? Know. We talked about a number of things when after that announcement, but I don't remember. And the, the short message is free. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. It's going to be like PT. It's very, yeah, it's, yeah, very much PT. Or at least that's like also the vibe that it seemed to be giving off. But uh, I don't remember if the short message is mm -hmm. one of them. Yeah, I, I wonder if it's one of those that like when PT came out and then they like jerked it back, uh, lots of people got real angry. I was one of them, right? Um, and so I wonder if it's just like, here you go, sorry, <laughs> the PT didn't work out. <laughs> yeah, I mean, because a lot of people requested, hey even if you're not making that game, make a game like this. We yeah, want yeah. that style of game because mm -hmm. they were really into it. So, um, yeah, I have not had a chance to download and try that yet, but um, I'm interested since it's free. And, sure. you know, the Silent Hill games are not bad games. I guess there are some bad Silent Hill games, but <laughs> <laughs> they're, uh, you know, they were pretty good games at, for their time. I'm excited for the, the two remake, um, and I have been since they originally announced it. It's just, it's one of those games that's, like, the nostalgia factor is there. Like, it's one sure. that, like, well, my partner in particular talks about how she used to, <laughs> when you had to, like, rent video games, right? Like, she would rent it, uh, she would get home from work from Mazio's Pizza and, and pop it in, or, like, rent it, keep it for the weekend and try to beat it. 
and then have to give it back on on Monday, right? And she did that until she finished it. So, uh, and I have similar stories around that and around Resident Evil, those kinds of things. But yeah, those like old school horror games that are honestly kind of awful uh, are also very nostalgic and dear. <laughs> sure. Um, let's see. They showed off Rise of the Ronin. I think we've seen a little bit of footage of this before, but they showed off quite a bit more of this. Uh, Rise of the Ronin is looks to be sort of an open world uh, samurai game, um, and it started off the trailer with him using a grappling hook to get up on top of a building, and then he like had a wingsuit that he like <laughs> jumped off the building with, and everything. Wait, we went from Assassin's Creed to Batman real fast. <laughs> yeah, I mean it is sort of Assassin's Creed cross Batman cross. Um, you know, a, a, a samurai game, you know, um, Ninja Gaiden or something. I was going to say, yeah, very, I definitely, uh, Sekiro, Ghost of Tsushima, mm -hmm. that, that style. I, the one I didn't, didn't know, so they saw this is a Koei Tecmo game, and they do all the Warriors games, correct? Like the Dynasty Warriors? Is that, yeah. That's cool. yeah. Is this, obviously it doesn't look to be played in that, that style of gameplay, but do is there a, is this sort of set in that? Do we know anything about that, or I don't know if anybody knows anything about that or not. I, I don't think so. I I haven't heard anything about it being set in the mm -hmm. the Dynasty Warriors series or anything. Or um, there's what is is it Samurai Warriors? Is that the sure, one? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I haven't heard it being okay. set within the the universe of those games because because as soon as i saw koei tecmo i was like oh is this one of those games and i was like nope it's definitely not not that style of gameplay at yeah. least so it's not a musu yeah. game um yeah i mean I, i'll be honest that's <laughs> i thought for a while when i saw that trailer i was like okay this is the game out of this entire show for me mm. this is the one i'm most excited about this game looks really cool i think i could get into this game um Something else then did take my attention away from it, and I'll talk about it here in a few minutes. Um, let's see. They showed off Until Dawn. Um, this is a remaster slash remake mm -hmm. uh, coming for the PlayStation 5 and PC. So I think the most exciting part is the PC because there's already a PlayStation 4 port, so you could already play this on your PlayStation 5. But um, they're, you know, obviously redoing some of the graphics mm -hmm. and everything. It looks really nice. I've heard or I've seen on Reddit that the only thing that's that's the downfall of it so far is that there are some bugs. Like, for example, um, a character will be like holding a lantern going through the woods and the lantern will be like shaking violently, <laughs> and, like, mm. and, like not moving. And so uh, I've seen some like funny like recreations of that sort of thing but honestly it they did it all on the the new engine and so it just it looks it looks really really cool i'm i'm excited to play it all over again not gonna lie <laughs> so if you don't know until dawn is sort of an interactive slasher movie hmm. um you know and we talked about this i guess last week that because there was yeah. the rumor that this was going to get announced and uh rami malik and uh Hayden Pantier, Pantier um, are both uh, actors in it, so it has their likeness and their voice. Um, and it's, it's a fun game. Like, it's mm -hmm. been years since I've played it, but I really enjoyed it mm -hmm. the first time I played it. Um, of course, I like, you know, the old Friday the 13th films and everything. Yeah, and for sure. Very much going for that vibe. Yeah, and, like, we talked about it before we actually pushed uh, record on the podcast, and one of the things we said was, that uh, well, Justin had mentioned that it's it's taking these slasher films but adding agency to it, which changes it. Um, and it's it's cool because like everyone who would make fun of the characters in these old slasher films and say, "Oh, why are you doing this? Like that's stupid. You're gonna get yourself killed." Well, you have the opportunity now to make those decisions for the characters, at least somewhat. Like obviously, it's a pretty linear storyline. You have to continue to progress it. But do you? Um, you hear a voice in the woods and you need to run to see if your friend is okay. Do you take the dangerous path that'll get you there faster or do you take the safer path and risk not getting there in time? Um, you, you get to choose those kinds of things and it's just, 
um, sometimes the risks pay off, sometimes they don't. And I don't know. I just, I like that kind of stuff. <laughs> yeah. Um, that's one I'd recommend for people. If you haven't played that before, check it out. Mm. Uh, they show off some footage from Judas. That's the new game from Bioshock creator Ken uh, Levine. Um, it looks like another Bioshock game. <laughs> I mean, it looks good, but I mean, it, it, do you like Bioshock? Do you want mm -hmm. more Bioshock? Mm -hmm. Ken Levine has made another Bioshock. Um, Alicia, <laughs> you were noting that this game is being hyped up as yeah, I think uh, this having was, a lot more choice in I, it. I think this was the one I saw that it, they were talking about, like choice matters more than ever, mm -hmm. which. <laughs> this isn't his like narrative Lego game that he was working on at some point, is it? At one point, he was supposedly working on a narrative Lego game that would allow you to, like, kind of put uh, different parts of stories together. On Steam, it says it is a, well, shoot, where did it go? It said it's a, a, a narrative FPS game, so maybe. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, it looks interesting. I guess we don't know enough about it yet, so. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so... Then we got a new trailer for Death Stranding with uh, 2 with its new subtitle, Death Stranding 2 on the beach. Kojima must be stopped. <laughs> <laughs> Kojima, I look, I love Kojima because Kojima is the insane person who has somehow convinced Sony to give him millions of dollars to go make whatever he wants to make. Mm -hmm. And he's just going to go make the most insane thing he can think of. <laughs> like, it just almost as like a flex, right? Like, he's showing the world, like, I can make a game that's still, like, you think you know what I'm going to make? I'm going to make something that's going to blow your mind. And so this is the trailer, so it's not a spoiler. But you're watching this trailer, and you're like, okay, yeah, this is sounds weird. This sounds like, a, you know, another Death Stranding game. And then all of a sudden, one of the characters turns around, and she has a little marionette setting on her shoulder. And the marionette starts talking to you, and then she says, well, you should take him with you. And so you clip him onto your belt, and he's just hanging from your belt as you walk <laughs> around. Okay, that is very different from the... I, I saw this title and thought, Kojima's insane. I wonder if it's the anime beach episode. That is not sounding like the anime beach episode. <laughs> Uh, no, like if you have not seen <laughs> Death Stranding, Death Stranding is a very unique game. No, that's why I was like Kojima's insane, so it would make sense that it was just going off off in left field like that. But yeah, <laughs> what? Um, you know, this is a <laughs> there's a there's a part later in the trailer where um, a guy is threatening you, and then he you like pull a sword on him, and so he takes a guitar and starts playing it, and it starts shooting lightning blast at you. <laughs> and then other people start attacking, and he swings the guitar around, and suddenly it becomes like an energy axe. Oh, my God. It's like something out of Transformers, like Optimus Prime <laughs> with his energy axe. And so it, it's, just, it's just insane, and I'm happy that there's somebody out there. Like, I love things like The Last of Us and Uncharted, mm -hmm. but those are sort of very grounded in a lot of ways. Like, even, you know, they're not really going to happen. They're sort of grounded in a world that could happen. Mm -hmm. And Kojima goes out and makes games that are just, like, break every rule. And that's cool, and I'm glad that he's convinced people that he's worth millions of dollars to do that. <laughs> <laughs> we need more storytellers like him. Mm -hmm. um, that game also looks amazing. Mm -hmm. There's a few shots where they show the terrain, mm -hmm. And that terrain just is sort of mind blowing. It's almost difficult to believe it's real. Yeah. Um, so good for them with that game. Uh, Kojima also announced that he is, when he finishes Death Stranding 2, his next project is going to be a quote action espionage game, <laughs> uh, a new franchise. So he is not going back to work with Konami through Sony. So he's developing an entirely new franchise. Everyone assumes in the style of uh, Metal Gear. So um, that's pretty exciting. <laughs> if, you, if you like Metal Gear and you like uh, Kojima's particular weirdness with that series. <laughs> uh, 
Um, and then they closed out the show by announcing that there's going to be a Final Fantasy VII Rebirth state of play next week. Uh, and that that will include news you won't want to miss, which I don't know what that means. I am so excited. <laughs> We're almost to rebirth, and I am I am ready to cry. <laughs> I I am. One more time. When does it come out? End of February. Yeah, end of March. End of, like end of February. I want to say like February twenty seventh or something okay. like that. They should have done 29th because it's leap year. This yeah. Year. They might have. I don't remember honestly, but Just take advantage of it. Mm-hmm. But I, I'm, I've got my theories. I'm ready to cry. <laughs> I will say the other thing that was mentioned during the state of play, um, just because we gave them a hard time on this show, was uh, Dragon's Dogma Two is maybe Capcom's million billion dollar seller um, by the end of March. Oh, granted right. that that had been <laughs> announced before whenever the state of play was but uh you know we we gave them a hard time about we have a game in the works that's gonna sell millions of copies by the end of march right but the thing was they said an unannounced game yeah and that's why i said like well and dragon's dogma 2 had been announced but i'll give them a little bit of a a leeway on that one i guess (laughs) there 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 is only two months left for them to sell millions and millions of copies of this, this i think it comes out like march 24th or something like that Speaking of past comments we've made on this show, they did actually show off a couple of VR games for PlayStation they VR 2. They did. And as much grief as we've given them over that, I don't think either of those games, one of them was a Metro game. Um, yeah, I can't imagine that's an exclusive. Right, and I can't imagine that's going to push that much hardware. Mm-hmm. That's no. like we're throwing a bone to the people who have already plopped down five to $600 for this headset. Yeah. And I mean, like, it's that's a franchise. People like Metro, but it's, sure. that's not a... Something if people don't know Metro, that's not gonna move. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You're not buying a VR a VR headset for Metro. <laughs> yeah. No, I can't imagine anyone is, but maybe there's diehard Metro fans who would. Um, let's see, Pow World. We talked about a little earlier. Um, has been announced. It's the biggest third party third party launch ever on mm-hmm. Xbox Game Pass, um, which seems significant mm-hmm. um, to have that. Um, and then also the Pokemon mod, which uh, Nintendo shut down, or the Pokemon company shut down, has uh, <laughs> returned, this time as the Legally Distinct Pocket Creatures Mod Pack. <laughs> it just sparks so much joy for me. <laughs> I just, I love... But that's what Pal World already, already was. Right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this is... This is going to get really like multiversal at some point when everybody is releasing packs of things that aren't Pokemon but look like Pokemon <laughs> into this game that already has characters that look like Pokemon but aren't. Mm-hmm. So I threw into the group chat earlier this week um, my dive into the Digital Monsters mm-hmm. universe because I was watching a friend play Pal World. Yeah. And I don't know how we got down to it. So that's the one that I'll, I will eventually be excited for is the Legally Distinct Digital Creatures <laughs> mod. Pack. Um, oh, I, bet, I bet it'll be here before summer. Digimon are some of the most insane designs I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> yeah, you were showing us the one that's uh, like a, a nun with guns. Oh, and not, put, yeah, nun with crucifix guns. Um, and, and yeah, the, I think the best that I've scene is just that it's one is a dog that's on all fours and then it evolves and it's now standing on two legs and has jeans on <laughs> does it have jeans or does it have it's jorts like, it's like cut off jeans yeah, yeah they're think, jorts i don't think they're i mean yeah kind of they, they are ripped for sure i mean that is a wolf from the 90s yeah yeah it, yeah I bet that wolf has and a has chain many on belts, its wallet. Many belts as well. <laughs> One was like a, and then another was just like a zombie bear pizza chef. Oh yeah, that's which, the yeah, picture you put in. That was, was excellent as well. Uh-huh. So, shouts out to Digimon. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, everyone who got mad when Pokemon started getting weird and like y'all didn't, y'all didn't. y'all stayed purely on the Pokemon train and never saw Digimon, did you? <laughs> 
Yeah, Digimon definitely it goes there. I was gonna say it's it's the the bane line like you adopted <laughs> the weirdness. I was born into it. <laughs> I was telling the the story in that chat that I had a roommate in college, and I would come back from class, and he would be sitting there watching Digimon, like the cartoon series. And I'd be like, "What are you, what are you doing?" And he was like, "Oh, I have the." the, the Pokemon was on. It just went off. I was like, this doesn't make this right. <laughs> like, it is just terribly embarrassing. <laughs> uh, oh, well. Um, let's see. Spec Ops The Line has been removed from digital storefronts. Um, so I know Xbox and, um, and Steam have both removed it. There were still some codes on third-party sites uh, still selling Steam codes, but one would assume that once those codes are gone, there won't be a way to access and get that game anymore. Um, Spec Ops The Line came out 10, 11 years ago, so somewhere in there, um, and is a military first-person shooter, but the thing that that game is remembered for, and it wasn't advertised as this at all, is that it's this really kind of like heart of darkness adaptation sort of commentary on uh, particularly war in the Middle East and um, what war does to people psychologically. It's very subversive of the, the genre. Right. And so it's really fondly remembered by a lot of people. Nobody knows why they're taking it down yet. They release some sort of vague statement about uh, licenses and that sort of thing, but it, does seem like sort of a weird move to remove it at this point. Um, so if you want that, at least on Steam, you can probably still get copies via third-party sites. I, I was looking at it the other day, and so, so because after I saw it, I was like, oh, i pretty sure I had Spec Ops on Steam, and it was no longer in my library, and now it just dawned on me. Like, I did not have it on Steam. I had it on good old games or one of those other mm -hmm. websites. So I'll have to, have to check, but like, that's what was going to come. I was like, that is unfortunately the problem with digital mm -hmm. releases, right? Yeah. Is if it gets take off, taken off of the, the storefront and they choose to, for whatever reason, not re up those licenses, that's it. Like there's, that's, there's no more chance to get it. I know we, we joked about it, but that's why like I, I did not want to get the Gollum game on steam. Cause I was like, I, yeah. I will wait and spend, more money to get a physical copy of this game because I don't want that same thing to happen. If you know, the game is again, I don't think it's as bad as people made it out to be, but mm -hmm. if it's one where it's just like, nah, re upping the license is just not worth it yeah. to, to the developers or whoever has to do that. Um, yeah, it just gets taken down and it's no longer available. And so, I mean, we talked about physical and digital media and you know how they are different. And I think that's, this is one of those reasons to, continue to embrace physical media for as long as we can. Mm, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I like that for the most part, and there have been some exceptions, if you have already purchased it, they're not removing it from your library, but even still, right? Like f from a preservationist perspective, yeah. the fact that this is a game that people can no longer play and it's, it feels like an important game. Yeah. I like, would, sorry. I'm sorry. No, I, like, I don't even know if it is an important game, right? But it, at the time, it felt important when it came out because it felt like it was doing something so radically different than most shooters were. And I would feel like that was... I mean, Call of Duty is still one of like the biggest game franchises there is, but that I think of that coming out at a time where like Call of Duty on Xbox Live was like, that's what ev that was video gaming for so many people. And it still yeah. is like, that is what video gaming is for so many people. I think that was a time when like people called in sick to work when call of duty came out. <laughs> sure. And like. yeah. And, um, and so for this game to like really subvert a lot of that military shooter genre, um, in the way that it breaks the fourth wall. Um, yeah, I know it's a, there's a article by a scholar I've met a couple of times, um, at one of the conferences I go to and he wrote, he, he writes a lot about militarism in, in games. And, you know, he wrote one of his articles about spec ops, the line and the ways that it upholds, but also, yeah, subverts, mm. subverts this genre in, 
important ways thinking about what it means moving forward. And so I would I would totally say it's an important game, even if it's not one that people will continue to play moving forward. I think it deserves to have you recognize its established spot in sort of games history. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I agree with that. Um, yeah, and there's been, uh, there's oddly been a history of sort of subversive military games over the years. Um, I mean, even dating back to the NES, um, there were games that were like surprisingly sort of subversive of your expectations. Um, and so it's always cool to, when games try that, especially a big budget game like Spec Ops The Line, mm-hmm. this wasn't some low indie title. Um, let's see, CBS has released a teaser image of their Among Us animated series. We may have talked about this at some point, but I didn't, I feel like I did not know this was happening. I'm so confused. It's, it's like just the, uh, it's like a pizza party that says we're dead. Yeah. Uh, and it's just like uh, our patient crewmates are rewarded with a pizza party, and then in quote or not quotations uh, parentheses. Thank you. I could not <laughs> think of the word <laughs> parentheses. It says totally safe, and then in parentheses it says not a trap. <laughs> I just it, like. I just don't understand how you can make a show. I'm like, like is it going to be a maybe limited a series? Year, a season, I guess, maybe. Yeah, but. like a little six episode. Like thing, I, I but. heard a weird fanfic on YouTube. Like, don't ask. It was a weird <laughs> black hole. <laughs> but a weird like Among Us fanfic that someone had recorded, and I, I, I have I, uh, like yeah, <laughs> yeah or not. even just like. Are these going to be like 30 minute epi- episodes? Yeah. Like yeah. I could expect like a webtoon is like, yeah, you know, yeah. maybe like 10, five minute things. Sure. I'm like, I could see this as like, like Italia, you know, full five minute episodes. Um, do, do a 10 episodes and call it good. But I'm, like once you figure out who the imposter is. and I'm not going to watch it either way. But like, yeah. I mean, best of luck to, the, to I mean, it. But yeah. I would watch it if it was five minutes. You but do, I'm certainly not watching 20 minutes. <laughs> you do Agatha Christie with it. You do, and then there were none, or ten little Indians, Um, right? Like, I mean, that's essentially what Among mm, Us is. So, I mean, I think the big issue then becomes you have to give those characters, like, personalities. Yeah. Yeah. Like, red and blue have to have personalities. (laughs) And the end of each episode is the the vote. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) And you know they can't eject the imposter before the end of the show, (laughs) because... Well, there's two of them, so they might. That's true. It's true. Yeah. You could have, that's the mid-season finale. Uh-huh. uh-huh. <laughs> they eject the first one out of the airlock. Do the others still get to come back as ghosts and finish their work? Like, <gasps> <laughs> See? See? You made fun of this concept, and you're all into it now. I'm j- I, I guess I, I also just wonder, is this going to be a kid's show? Yeah. It looks like, I mean, but then again. So I mean, who lo- plays murder. Um, Who plays Among Us? <laughs> So little I, think, kids. I think kids play Among yeah. Us. I think uh, everybody everybody played Among Us when yeah. at the height of the pandemic. But right, um, yeah, I, I I don't know. I I I I don't know. I think a range of people do. Like I know that um, a good friend of mine um, has a daughter that's like nine or ten. That she would she would want us to get on and play with her, mm-hmm. but her mom only allowed like she wasn't allowed to do like like talk to people. She was only allowed to do the like keyboard chat or whatever. Um, and so like there were quite a few kids playing it at some point. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, at, Mario was right at the height of the pandemic. That game was incredibly popular. Mm-hmm. I knew yeah. so many people who were playing it. And um, I think it's still on my phone from then. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, honestly, probably same. Yeah. Um, we mentioned Sonic a little earlier. Uh, it was announced just today, I guess, that Jim Carrey is returning for Sonic the Hedgehog 3. Um, that had been sort of in doubt. Yeah, he, he had technically announced his retirement after Sonic the Hedgehog 2. And then now we got a new image for the title screen, title card, whatever you want to call it. And they played Live and Learn, and I screamed and scared my cat. <laughs> And then they had the voice. They had a voice clip of 
Jim Carrey's Robotnik laugh. And every and half the comments are like, "Oh my gosh, is this? Uh, did we did we get Shadow's voice actor announced now?" And every, and the other half the comments are like, "No, that's the voice clip from Jim Carrey Robotnik laugh." <laughs> so, um, well, I mean, I think Jim Carrey is the most important part of that franchise For at sure. this point. For sure. I mean, he, I, they need him back. Look, twenty twenty four, love it or hate it, twenty twenty four is the year of Shadow the Hedgehog. <laughs> Well, it's gonna okay. it's gonna be a long year. <laughs> <laughs> Man, what a depressing year! <laughs> you heard it here here first. Shadow the Hed- Hedgehog remake coming soon. <laughs> not just the generations either. Full game remake. Oh man! Well, what if they did do a big budget remake of Shadow the Hedgehog? <laughs> If it's already did, insane just, that they made the first one. If they did, I just need them to keep where's that damn fourth chaos emerald. <laughs> we need to keep edgy the hedgy. Um, let's see. Uh, Brock Lesnar has been removed from <laughs> WWE Supercard. Um, this follows after allegations that came out in a Wall Street Journal article about Vince McMahon. So we're talking about wrestling WWE. Um we don't need to go into what those allegations fully are and everything. Uh, they were of a very disturbing sexual nature of Vince McMahon's behavior, uh, which in, included sex trafficking. Mm-hmm. Um, and the allegations uh, referred to uh, a wrestler who was a former UFC champion um, also engaging in some of those actions, which... Look, I'm not. If it's not Ronda Rousey, <laughs> the only other one I know it could be is Brock Lesnar. Um, mm-hmm. There may be somebody else that I'm just unaware of in wrestling right now, but um, and I don't think it's Ronda Rousey because she came out and publicly made comments very uh, against uh, Vince McMahon and some other of the executives there. But the reason this is interesting for us from a video game perspective is, as noted, Brock Lesnar has been removed from WWE Supercard, which is a mobile game. Um, And they are putting out a new WWE game here very soon, uh, 2K24, WWE 2K24, I believe is the title. And Brock Lesnar is theoretically going to be in that game. So I wonder if they are um, rushing right now to remove him and potentially other people who might be named as part of this lawsuit. So that's where the Wall Street Journal article comes from, is uh, there has been a lawsuit filed uh, against Vince McMahon and and other people at WWE. Mm -hmm. Um, I would suggest to people not to read that court case. Yeah. not to read those allegations. And mm-hmm. he, here's the reason why. That's not to defend WWE. Let them burn for all I care. The reason I say is it's actually really disturbing. Yeah. Um, and th- it's disturbing at a level where you're like, what the hell is wrong with these people? These, there's something deeply, deeply wrong with these individuals who were involved in this. Um, and I can see these game companies saying, hey, we don't want anything to do do with you we're trying to market to families and kids yeah and we can't have people who are going to be associated with the stuff involved in this case mm-hmm. so um probably more news coming in the next few weeks with mm-hmm. wwe products um let's see there have been some exclusive shirts in hi-fi rush uh, hi-fi rush update they put out an update marking the one-year anniversary of the release of that game. As part of that, they have these unique shirts. And on different platforms, there was a unique shirt per platform. So Steam had a unique shirt. The Epic Game Store had a unique shirt. Xbox had a unique shirt. Some people have data mined into that update and found that there are additional uh, unique shirts one that's blue and one that's red. One that's blue and white, one that's red and white, which are the logo colors for PlayStation and Switch. And this seems to play even more into the rumor that we've talked about on here that that game is coming to those systems sometime soon. If we get a Switch port of that game, I will be so happy to finally play it. Yeah, I mean, 
it's cool if they're going to put that out onto all these other systems. More people getting to play it is better. Um, let's see. And our last news item here is Embracer has continued their layoffs uh, this week across many, many studios. Um, of course, you know, I feel like a year ago we were saying here talking about Embracer was a tower of cards that was going to collapse at some point because they were just buying up too much. And that collapse started last year when they started closing studios and laying people off. And it is multiple stories over the last week of different studios, different layoffs, different closures. Um, and you know, the thing that's really a tragedy is there's some good teams there, good development teams, some cool IP and, who knows what, how all these people are going to get caught up in this mess. Yeah. So, um, another one of those cautionary tales about people getting way too big that they can't even manage themselves as a company. Mm -hmm. Um, all right. That does it for the news this week. Uh, let's move on to our big question. And Derek has sent us his third and final question. Now he could send us another one, but he sent us three all at once. And this was his third and final one. So we're going to address it. This one is not nearly as uh, scandalous as last week's <laughs> question, which was, to be quite honest, a little upsetting. <laughs> um, so this question is a little bit more kind of straightforward and everything, but maybe a little bit more existential crisis inducing. <laughs> So the question for this week is, what video game do you feel is a good metaphor for your life currently and why? So not your life and hope, but right now where you are in life, what video game feels like a really good metaphor for your life? Um, I'm really hoping you're not going to say Dead by Daylight. <laughs> but why don't we go with you first, Christina? <laughs> Listen, okay, but the the actual answer is pretty ridiculous as well. But you have to like follow me because I thought I was like, oh, uh, I'm gonna do something philosophical here, like my life, whatever. And then I was like, you know what? No, um, it's Fall Guys. <laughs> <laughs> but listen, but listen, it's like <laughs> I feel like so um, as like many folks know, like I'm this is my first year here at uh, SIU and I feel like um, I definitely up until this point have felt like when you first start playing Fall Guys and you don't really know the controls and you're just like kind of waddling around and you don't know how to work the courses and I'm finally I think getting to the point where I've won a couple uh, <laughs> of the rounds like have I ha gotten a crown no but like I've I've won a couple of the of the races like getting this job to me was winning a race and um, I, I'm definitely going to fall, but then I'm going to get back up. I'm going to look ridiculous, although very cute while doing so. Um, and that's just, that's kind of, kind of where, where I am right now. I'm also like, because of like big life changes, uh, like divorce and stuff like that. It's like, I'm trying to not take life too seriously. Um, because I think if, if you're in a moment of big transition like that and you take things too seriously it overwhelms you and i'm just trying to goofily make my way to the finish line at this point <laughs> i think fall guys is a uh, a good metaphor in that case <laughs> thank you well you said it wasn't going to get philosophical in that <laughs> <laughs> well i am i'm a poet by the way <laughs> that's what i do in my spare time <laughs> um alicia how about you um so this was one i i struggled to come up with an answer for. Um, <laughs> I finally went with Star Tropics, but not because of the plot of Star Tropics. I went with Star Tropics because there are certain points in the game that you literally cannot keep going unless if you have the instruction manual to like get the code or you know you can look it up online. And because there are times where you go back and re you know you go back and redo a level to get this little easter egg and it doesn't tell you it's just going to be a little Easter egg. It's, it makes it seem like you're going to go back and redo that level and it's going to be something big that you get out of it. And then, no, you get nothing. <laughs> um, I don't know. I feel like right now I'm just kind of at a, at a moment of time where I'm like, how do I life? 
How, how do, where's my instruction? I don't have the instruction manual. I can't keep going and I'm redoing things thinking, you know, I'm going to get something different. So I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit struggle busing right now. I could use the instruction manual to get me to the next step, <laughs> but yeah, that, that's, that's where I'm at. <laughs> All right. Um, Mario, how about you? Yeah. So not really a metaphor, I guess more of a literal, uh, connection um uh the game that i probably have recently played that would be a good sort of feeling about you know where i'm at is it was a game i played last year called when the past was around and uh oh, i'm gonna, I'm gonna oh. cry um it's a game about a woman whose partner passes away and it's a point and click adventure where you play through like these different settings twice and so the first time you play through it you are playing through like the memory of her, you know, with her partner in this space. And so the first time might be uh, meeting them for the first time, the first date that you go on, um, moving into your, you know, space together. And then you play through that same level again in the present after that partner's passing and ultimately like reflecting on this space, the way that it communicates, you know, this sense of love and connection with, um, that partner and it ends up each level ends with the collection of some item. So like the, there's like a scarf and like a music box that, uh, you sort of collect and hold, um, in memory of this person. And you know, with my dad passing last year, I feel like that has been a lot of what it was. I remember, you know, when I went home cleaning out his living space and I think the thing that I cried over the most was a pen. And it wasn't like a fancy pen or anything like that. It was one of those like G2 pilots that you can buy for like $3 at Staples. But I think the thing that I appreciated so much about it was how it isn't always these like big things that we hold so dear or that remind us, remind us of another person, but it's... um you know, sometimes just those everyday objects. And I think right now in particular, you know, I've, it's not a surprise. I'm a big sports fan. And one of the biggest parts of my relationship with my dad was our shared love of the 49ers. And so them going into the Super Bowl next week, there's like this simultaneous, you know, I want this so much. Um, you know, he and I never got to like celebrate a Super Bowl win together they got so close so many times and so part of me wants it so much but there's also part of me that's like it would feel a little bit like a cruel joke um for them to win in the like the first year without him and so like i said a little bit more of a literal comparison um but it's a game that when I played it, I played it really shortly after. I probably played it in like, he passed at the end of February last year. I probably played it sometime in March. And um, it really, really stuck with me. It's a really beautiful um, game. And so, yeah. Yeah, that's, uh, I sort of don't want to, say my answer now. I know I felt bad I was like oh, I'm, this is not the way I, other people are going to answer this question I, but. I get that though because like I just finished uh, recording a, a video for the online conference and like one of the things that struck me is I was like when academic couples divorce who gets the books if they don't have kids mm. and like one of the hardest things with with me and my ex was like going through our books and figuring out what was what and the book that I wrote this piece over was one that I I'd kept but that had like strong links and so we don't think about those little objects as having uh such big meaning but like what they get attached to so for a game to tap into that the the conversation we were having at the very beginning about spirit fair mm -hmm. um i think that's another one of those games that or that, unpacking yes yeah. that just speak to those bigger universal narratives and why it's so lovely that they're in games is it can help you process it can help you work through it if nothing else it shows you that the crap that you're going through you're not going through alone that it's it's something folks go through and you'll make it to the other side you'll the game you'll you'll play through the game you know 
Yeah, when you were talking about the ink pen, it um, we're going through my parents' house right now, um, and and trying to just like get rid of a lot of stuff because at some point my mom will probably move out of that house. Um, I, not in the immediate future, I don't think, but like at some point she will. And uh, it's been mm, sixteen years uh, since my dad passed away. Seventeen years. Um, and one of the things that my sister pulled out of the house was um, one of those little uh, spiral notepads that fit in your hand, mm-hmm. you know. And my dad had a bunch of those, and he would take them to work and everything. And so she gave it to me, and there's in this little notepad is, like, where he wrote down, like, measurements of something he was working on at work. Mm-hmm. And it's like... You know, like you said, it, it's not anything super um, sentimental except that he always had one of those notepads in his back pocket and he would uh, take it, you know, like we'd go to buy baseball cards or something because that was something we did as, uh, as when I was a kid. And he would be sitting there taking notes over something like, mm-hmm. well, this card is, you know, $10 here, it's $11 down here or something. And so is you start looking at those items and you're like, yeah, there's, there's sometimes are those like big singular items that kind of attach you to someone. But like what really attaches you to someone are all the like little things that were uniquely theirs, right? That, you know, that was the particular brand of pen that they liked, right? Cause everybody has their favorite kind of pen. Mm-hmm. And so everybody like, and you start going, Oh no, those are the little things that, I actually uh, miss day to day. Like I'm, I'm, so I have one of those notepads setting up on my dresser. I saw it this morning. Um, and when I see it, I think of him mm-hmm. and like that more than even like pictures, mm-hmm. like becomes like, Oh, this is um, like a totem, you know, like this mm-hmm. connection to that person and everything. So, you know, and again, like relating it back to games, like unpacking, right? Like that's the emotional impact of that game is what those items come to represent about that character's life and their relationships with other people um, and like sort of revelations and things that they figure out. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a heavy response, but like I think it's a response that lots of us can relate to mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. in different ways. Um, yeah, so <laughs> please bring back the goofy. Follow, that up. Follow, silly. Uh, follow that up, Justin. <laughs> um, yeah, so what I wrote down is Boulder Dash. <laughs> so Boulder Dash was a game I used to play on Commodore 64 as a kid. And, um, if you've never played Boulder Dash, it is basically you're, digging through dirt and there are boulders and like the boulders can like fall on you. So you're always kind of having to, um, you can kind of create chain reactions. So sort of like dig dug, but like a little bit more chain reactions that you can create so that boulders start falling and you're like, wait, how do I get out of here? Mm -hmm. And I'm kind of like trapped into this like mess. And so I feel like I have been juggling a lot of different balls lately. And I feel like, one of these balls is going to fall and hit me on the head eventually. Mm. And uh, I hope it's not a boulder. <laughs> <laughs> I hope it's still the, like the little goofy foam ball that they gave us to de-stress last year. That's <laughs> setting in my office right now. And I throw it against the wall and think, Oh, is anybody in that office next to mine? Am I, am I going to annoy them? If I throw it against the window, is this glass shatterproof or is this <laughs> building old enough? It's going to go right through that, that window. Um, so anyways, I, I do like sort of, uh, I have been feeling that kind of just too many things going on at once. And, uh, you know, I, I tend to feel that way during the semester quite often. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's felt an awful lot like Boulder Dash. If you've never played Boulder Dash, I highly encourage, but go play <laughs> like the original one for the Commodore 64. They've done some updated versions, but I don't think they've ever recaptured that spirit quite mm-hmm. the same. 
Um, all right, that does it for our question for this week, and that does it for the show. If you want to send us a question, you can do so by emailing us at justin.young at siu.edu. Um, you can check out our website at salukigames.com, and there's all sorts of cool stuff from the game of the year, uh, including uh, over four hours of podcast on there, and then individual uh, top 10 list from a variety of different people um, here at the university. Uh, that's something hopefully we can keep expanding because I think it's really cool this year to see uh, all those different opinions and different ways. And, and like almost nobody's playing the same games, mm-hmm. which is what's really cool. Everybody came up with these different lists and there's very <laughs> little overlap on the different lists. So that's fun. Um, and then as always, thank you, uh, to Alicia and Christina and Mario for joining me. Thank you for everyone listening to this, uh, go on to iTunes and give us a five-star rating that helps people find the podcast, um, share it with your friends, uh, tell your dentist about it, (laughs) Tell, tell your dog, um, you know, let them spread the good word for us. Play it at your next bonfire, campfire night. I was about to say no. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> no. I'm not. I'm not going down that route anymore because I'm afraid what I will discover. What kind, of, what kind of hole would that be? I'll say you're not going down that rabbit hole. <laughs> I said a route. A route. <laughs> not a hole. <laughs> Poor OJ's going to listen to this. <laughs> you realize OJ listens to episodes he's not on. He's going to listen to this, and he's going to be at work, and his brain is just going to melt. <laughs> OJ, when you when you do listen to this, please post in the chat, are you team you hate rabbits or you love rabbits? <laughs> Have you heard that phrase before? We would greatly appreciate it. We'll share it with the listeners next week. Please, everyone listening, write in to justin.young at siu.edu. Are rabbits in your heart? (laughs) 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 Have you heard the good rabbit word? (laughs) (laughs) Please help us as Alicia tries to indoctrinate us into her bizarre rabbit cult. (laughs) Anti-rabbit cult. I don't even know at this point. (laughs) I'm kind of lost on it. All right. uh, That does it for this week's episode. We'll be back next week with a new episode. Until then, play some cool games. 